Let's start question two. Mrs. Smith would like to buy a car, but does not have the full cash amount, like few of us do. She downloaded two payment options for two different cars, as shown in table two below, right? So here's the two options. There's a Ford Figo, there's a BW Polo, right? And you'll see that initially, this is how much it would cost if she had just the cash money then, but she doesn't have that. So she has this other option where you pay a deposit. Over there, you don't. Over there, you do. You have monthly installments, then this residual value. Basically, what that means is you pay these monthly installments for these different periods of time. And then at the end, you have to pay this off. So 30% of that you have to pay off at the end. And then you have to pay that amount at the end, which is sometimes quite a lot, right? And people don't often understand these and then they get themselves into debt. But that's another story. Then the monthly admin fee, that's added to that, right? So that'll be on top of the monthly installment. The number of months, you can see this one's quite a bit shorter. And then that, okay? Don't get hung up on the detail. Remember, I always say, go straight into the questions and they often help you sort of like steer to where you need to be with regard to understanding the scenario. So don't stress. Let's just make sure we have our calculator on hand. So let's get going. It says use table two above um, to answer the questions that follow. Before I move on, please note this little asterisk here. It says residual value is the last month's payment, right? So here where it says 48 payments, it actually means 47 payments of that. And then the 48th payment is that, obviously with admin fees on top. But just note that because students often forget about these little asterisk notes at the bottom and they're quite important when doing your calculation. So 2.1.1 says state what type of payment option is shown in table two. So now this is one that students often are like, uh, wait. So it's just a higher purchase, right? You could say higher purchase. You could say um, it's a balloon payment. Um, but I would just say higher purchase, right? Um, there's lots of different things in the memo, but the one I think is most obvious is higher purchase. Okay, you don't have to write mounds and mounds of different options. You just have to write one, right? Because remember, one point gives you two marks when it comes to these sort of state questions. So then it says, calculate the deposit amount for the Ford Figo. So for the Ford Figo, the deposit is 5% of this amount there. Wow, that arrow is badly drawn, right? But so what we're going to do is we're going to say 5% times by 215100, which is the cost of the car. We're going to plug that into our calculator. 5% times 215100. And we write that it is this amount here. Now, please be careful with this, right? Is students often forget to put their RAND values in. This is a RAND amount, so remember to put your RAND value in. Right, let's move on. It says, right, in simplified form, the ratio of the term agreement of the Ford Vigo to the VW Polo, right? So we're basically saying the term, it's the 72 to 48. It did say the Figo to the VW. So don't mix them up. You have to say 72 to 48. And what did it say? In simplified form. So simplified in form just means that there isn't a number that can go into both sides in order to make it smaller, but still keep it as a whole number. So you mustn't be like trying to make one of these sides one. We just want to find something that divides into both of them. Now, if your timetables are good, which I hope they are, 12 is pr a pretty good option here, right? So if you divide each of those by 12, you'll get that. You'll see then that two actually goes further into each of them. So the most simplified version is three to two, right? Um, I'm just checking here in the memo. I always want to make sure that I'm not doing things wrong. I hate to mislead you. Um, let's continue now to 2.1.4. It says, which one of the two vehicles will be more cost effective in terms of monthly budget? So now when students read this question, they want to go do like a whole exercise saying this is more expensive than this. Don't stress yourself. It just said monthly installment. So which one is more cost effective? It's my boy Ford Figo, right? So you just write Ford Figo. Don't stress yourself out, right? Remember, these questions in the beginning, they're a little bit easier because they're easing you into the paper. So don't go stress yourself, okay? Calculate the total, the total cost of the VW Polo if the monthly installment remain the same throughout the contract period, except for the final payment. So the, the VW saying it has 47 payments of this much, right? And then the 48th payment is going to be this one. Okay, that's what it's saying. That's what it's wanting you to understand. It says, you may use the following formula. So let's use this. It says total cost equals total value of monthly installments plus admin fees 
plus residual value. Now, here, our admin fee, we don't have as a random amount. So the first thing I would do is I'd go work out what 2.08 of what, just be careful, the monthly installment. So three, three, four, five. So work out what Samantha, oh, not Samantha. I don't know where Samantha came from. Mrs. Smith, sorry. Maybe her first name is Samantha. You never know. 2.08. And remember, this is percent, right? Times by three, three, four, five. And, oh, you see, I didn't put percent in. I tell you to put percent in and then I don't do it myself, right? It would be, the admin cost would be 69 and 58 cents, right? So what's quite important here is remember you have to round it off because obviously you um, can't state a round amount with more than two decimals. Why did I make it 58? Because when we want to round two decimals, we look at the third decimal. The third decimal there is six, which is above five. So we round it up and it becomes 58. So that is my monthly admin fee. Let's then do our total cost. So our total cost is going to be our monthly installment, right? It's going to be our admin fee and it's going to be our last cost, right? Uh, right? Now you could be saying, oh, Molly, what are you doing? I'm not done yet. How many of these do we have? 47. Okay, how many of these do we have? One. Now, the tricky part here, and this is where I sometimes disagree with the memo, is it, it, it says that in the last payment, there's no admin fee, right? That's what the memo states. I personally don't think that it says that in the question. So the memo says times by 47 because it says that the, the, this um, admin fee, oh, okay, no, it did, I thought it said something extra there, it didn't. Um, it says this admin fee is part of the monthly installment. But I guess the logic is, is that in this last payment, it's not a monthly installment and therefore there's no admin fee. So here you times that by 47 and then you would add all of these together, put that into your calculator. So we would say 33345 three, three, times by 47 plus 69.58 times by 47 plus 116759, which is what I would pay at the end. Right, and the total amount I will pay for this, quite expensive, 277244.26. And that's how much Mrs. Smith will pay for this in entirety if she decides to buy the VW Polo. Okay, so that's that. We got all our marks, fabulous. Right, let's continue now to the last question for this video. It says, Mrs. Smith invested 60,000 at a bank for two years. With compound interest, in, with compound interest. In the first year, she received an interest rate of 4.3% per, percent per annum, while in the second year, the interest rate was 5.1% per annum. Mrs. Smith stated that she would have enough money at the end of the second year to pay the residual value of the Ford Figo, right? Verify showing all calculations whether, the, um, whether her statement is correct. Now, remember with these questions, this is what students often get wrong. They forget to say whether it's correct or not, right? So if you're running out of time, um, just write correct or incorrect. And if you have like a 50-50% chance of getting at least like one mark, right? But be careful here um, to do the calculation and then also state what it means. That's a very important part of doing that, that you state it and you explain what it means. So let's go and do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is the easy thing. I'm going to say, well, what is actually the residual value for the four figure? Well, it's 30% times the initial value right? The retail price, if you want to call it that. That's what it's times. So I'm going to go do that part first. So I'm going to say 30%. And remember, it's very important to put that percent sign in because you tell your calculator what it is you want it to do. And remember, your calculators are only as good as what you tell them to do. Otherwise, they're pretty useless. Okay. So that is how much it would cost. Okay. That's how much that 30% um, residual value is going to be. So that's how much she needs in order to pay that residual value. So she put in 60,000 Rand, right? And in the first um, year, she gets 4.3%. So what we're going to do is we're going to say she gets this. So she's still going to have what she invested plus 4.3% times 60,000, right? So that's what she put in. And this is the additional interest she's going to get, right? So we're going to say 60,000 plus 4.3%. 3% times 60,000, okay? So at the end of the first year, this is how much she's going to have, okay? That's first year, okay? 
second year, she's going to have the amount she put in, right? But in the second year, she didn't have the same interest rate, right? What interest rate did she have? 5.1%. So you're going to say 5.1% times, yo, my handwriting is shocking, 62,580. So now we're going to say that. Remember, you can use this little answer function where it basically stores, the pre it uses the previous answer that you put in, which is this, and then it uses it to do your next calculation. If you're not comfortable doing that, that's also okay. Right, and at the end, she's going to 65,771.58. Okay, so we're not done now. You have to compare this to this, and you say, yes, she is correct, because the amount that she will have with my terrible, terrible handwriting is greater than the amount that she will need, right? And that is us done. So I hope that was helpful. This is a really good question, actually a lot of marks, um, but also a good one to kind of make sure that you're on top of your finance. Let's move on to the next question.